All aboard for a most unique way to go out to eat. You got great food, great view, great customer service. It's dinner on the R.J. Corman Lexington Dinner Train. It'll take you on a tour of horse country with a whole new perspective. The scenery, the food. And it'll take your taste buds to a whole new level of satisfaction. Delicious. Coming up, see what's cooking and the secrets to cooking it yourself. That's a good secret. From prime rib and pasta. It's fabulous. To ahi tuna and decadent desserts. Really good. Really good. Right along as we reveal the secrets of the R.J. Corman Lexington Dinner Train right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Tim Laird with you again, riding the rails this time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We're on board the R.J. Corman Lexington Dinner Train. But this is it. You're cooking right here. And... We're in the kitchen car with executive chef Gil Logan, who's making everything fresh as you roll through the rolling hills of horse country. The scenery is wonderful. Just uh, the meal was excellent. Everything was really, really good. Dining on the railroad is relatively new to folks in Lexington, but it's old hat for the R.J. Corman Company. They've been doing this in Bardstown for a quarter century. So it took us 25 years to get it perfect down there, and then we moved it to Lexington. We know how you like perfection here. This trip begins at this beautiful glass depot that's right behind Rupp Arena. From there, the train takes you right into the heart of horse country, where you'll see a half dozen premier horse farms and other natural wonders along the way. A lot of nice scenery. You're getting out in the middle of all of these horse farms. We love seeing uh, the scenery. It was just delightful. The scenery is amazing and it changes from season to season as does the menu. And take it from me, the food is out of this world. We do everything fresh right here. It's fresh saute, freshly carved prime rib, freshly carved pork. We do everything fresh right here on the train. Delicious. The food was great. That tomato jam was the best stuff I've ever tasted. The food was delicious. You can choose from the classics like chicken marsala or prime rib, or more modern dishes like ahi tuna, even lobster. I had lobster salad, it was fantastic, loved it. And the quality isn't just in the food. You can also choose from dozens of different bourbons and high-end wines. I've picked all the top shelf bourbons, your top wines. We're top end and that's where we live, that's, that's our home. Top of the line across the board. It's truly red carpet with white tablecloths and tuxedos. Our job is to spoil you like you'd have been spoiled in the 1940s. Chef Gill is really going to spoil us on this trip because he's taken us up into the kitchen car to reveal the secrets to some of his most popular menu items on the train. First up, ahi tuna. He'll use the same fish to make two different dishes, starting with a tuna salad for lunch. We're using just sushi grade fresh ahi tuna. Um, I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit with some sesame oil. And then I'm gonna use a little sesame oil to sear. And that's how I'm gonna get the sesame seeds to kind of stick to the tuna. It's sesame on sesame. So then it's just real easy. You just coat the sesame. He covers the tuna with sesame seeds on both sides and then puts a touch of the oil into a hot saute pan. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of sesame oil, and that's what we're gonna use also on here. Put that on there. I don't want the tuna to cook all the way through, and the middle's gonna be rare. So it's got some nice juice and good ocean flavor in it still. And notice it's not black, but it is good and toasted. And then it's literally just gonna go for about four or five seconds on the other side, maybe 10, 15 seconds. All I want is just get a little bit of toast on that on that up that other side. And now for the salad. So I've got some nice red oak leaf. Look at this little sweet baby red romaine and some red chicory. So these will all have different kinds of spicy, different kind of notes. And then I'm gonna take a Napa cabbage and chop it up. And that and I've already got some already I've already done here. These are all the greens with the Napa cabbage mixed in. It's a nice medley of Asian greens. And that, that's how I'm going to make the base for my salad. We're going to take this medley, put it right in the bowl, get some of our sweetened sesame dressing. It's basically, it's sesame oil. I've got some of our, 
uh, local honey right here, our sourwood honey that we're using. We use a local soy sauce that's done in actually the bourbon barrels. It's from Slow Foods. It's a great, great product. Um, and then sesame seeds, we toast some white and dark sesame seeds, blend it in with some pickled ginger. So it's a real, really nice dressing. Greens go down. And then he's made what he calls Kentucky kimchi. I've got cucumbers, I've got carrots, I've got pickled ginger, and I've got some snow peas. And I've made like a little kimchi that I'd want to kind of put in the middle here. All right, and then we're just going to come down and slice that tuna nice. Put it on my salad. So it's got some, some rareness to it. So then what I'm going to do is I've got something called a, a ponzu. Ponzu is basically, it's a, it's, a, it's a type of soy sauce. It's got some citrus notes to it. So it's like, imagine soy sauce with orange and lemon and lime in it. And I want to just put a little squirt on top. I know how much that uh, tuna loves wasabi. So we know we're making a wasabi aioli. We've taken wasabi and we've incorporated it into our own kind of mayonnaise. And I'm just going to put a little drizzle on top of that tuna because they love one another. Wasabi loves tuna and vice versa. And then for a little bit more crunch. So what we've done is we've taken some wonton skins and we've just done a quick fry on them with a little bit of uh, salt and pepper. And that's gonna go right on top for your crunchy crunchy. Some microgreens go on top of that for garnish and flavor. That add another nice kind of uh, spicy note to the very top. Now, just because we're fancy and we wanna spoil you rotten, what I've done is I've, I've gotten four different colors of topeka. It's flying fish eggs, basically what they are. It's caviar, yep. It's a type of caviar. And there is our signature with your chopsticks tuna salad. You can get top grade tuna for dinner on the train as well. This is the dinner version. Here's how he does that. That's just jasmine rice. I'll put these down first. Got a quick saute there. And then that seared tuna, this time cut into just two pieces. Like this. I'm going to do a quick saute on some snow peas and carrots. You got just a little bit of the uh, ponzu in there. You could buy ponzu in the store, but on the dinner train, Chef Gill makes it from scratch. The secret is his soy sauce, which has been aged in bourbon barrels. And we add our orange peel, we add our oranges, we add our lemons, we add our limes. Just let it infuse cold in the walk-in for about two, three days, and it'll get all those flavors inside. And then the same thing here, I want to do a ponzu drizzle, but I want to get it kind of down here on this side. And then I'm going to, do, I'm going to put a little wasabi back on this side also. And just give them a nice little pile of wasabi. Yummy, yummy. We're rolling on on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Next, the Lexington Dinner Train's Butternut Squash Soup. Where do you try that? Plus, the secrets to making pork tenderloin as tasty as it is on the train. Very good. And later, don't miss dessert. We'll get the secrets to making cherry cobbler from scratch. And R.J. Corman's chocolate choo-choo for two. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is brought to you in part by Ale 81. When the time is right, make it a late one. Ale 81. I'm Michael Simon, and thanks for watching Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. All aboard! It's Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs on the R.J. Corman Lexington Dinner Train. I'm Tim Laird, cruising the hills of horse country in style. It's a culinary adventure on the train. It's perhaps the most unique dinner experience in all of Kentucky. Fine dining with some of the best scenery in the bluegrass. To be able to ride on a train and go out and see the horse capital of the world, you can't beat it. You know, you just cannot beat it. Along with natural wonders and a view of Keeneland you've probably never seen before, you'll also get a new view of Calumet, the farm that's produced the most Kentucky Derby winners in history along with two Triple Crown winners, Whirlaway and Citation. In 1941, 
and 1948. The head chef on the train also has some history with the horses too. Chef Gil Logan used to serve hundreds of thousands of people on Derby Day, but now he's doing it on the train. I was at Churchill for a while and I had to be very quiet around the horses. Had to tiptoe on the backside in the morning. They once told me I couldn't go back because my brakes were squeaky in my truck. Now by law, I legally have to sound a very, very loud air horn at the intersection and watch 17 million dollars worth of racehorses freak out and run away. My favorite part. We loved it. The scenery, the food. The views are incredible, just like the food. Start off with assorted local cheeses and Chef Gill's whipped pumpkin mousse in the fall and winter. Then, butternut squash soup with hazelnut whipped cream. Split these, roast them in the oven. Takes about two hours to roast it down. Scoop them out and then use the make the soup. We had heavy cream, nutmeg, mace, uh, a little bit of cinnamon. And then the hazelnut cream, we just make fresh whipped cream with the hazelnut oil. And that goes right on top. Wait till you try that. And wait until you try this. Well, now we're gonna do a, uh, a classic. We're gonna do chicken marsala old school the real way. So what we're gonna start with, we're gonna use our airline chicken breast, which it just means that it has the drummy bone left in. It's been boned out, frenched, everything after that. A little pounding of the chicken breast is the secret here. It actually helps to evenly cook it. Normally, you go, you're you real thin down here, you're thicker up here. By doing that, I've kind of leveled it all out so I can cook it evenly when I, when I do a quick pan fry. Just a little salt and pepper, and then right into my seasoned flour. And then right over here, into my cast iron skillet. It's got my oil ready to go. Whenever I pan fry anything, I like to do it in cast iron. Just holds the heat better, it actually makes it a little bit hotter. You get some nice color, give it the old flip a -roo. Look how happy they are in there together. Birds of paradise. And now we're just gonna make a classic, classic marsala. We're gonna use three different mushrooms because I can get them right now. These are chanterelles, creminis, which is basically it's a baby portabella, and our good old fashioned domestic mushrooms. Now I'm just gonna get a rough chop on these because I don't want it all sliced. I want some texture to these mushrooms. So a nice rough chop, and that way you can tell that it's done by hand in the back. We didn't buy sliced mushrooms. Just salt and pepper. I'm a big fan of salt and pepper. And then let these sit over here for a minute, and then I'm gonna let my saute pan get good and hot. He'll line that pan with both butter and oil. I put the olive oil in first so it changes the melt point and smoke point of the butter. So if you don't want your butter just to turn black and burn away, use a little olive oil, even a little pan spray, whatever you got first, then you still get your good butter flavor. That's a good secret. Mushrooms love butter, like peanut butter loves jelly. All right, we are good to go here. Right in there. And then I'm gonna do a quick saute on these over high heat. All right, let's deglaze this pan with a little bit of Marsala wine. Marsala's almost got a uh, buttery sweetness to it. Almost kind of tastes like vermouth a little bit. It's not real wine driven, it's not, Acid driven, it's more of a mellow wine. You want to cook off the alcohol, just leaving you that good southern Italy flavor. It's just it's delicious. Once the wine is reduced a bit, Chef Gill adds his homemade demi gloss, a thick reduction of beef and chicken stocks made from roasted bones and vegetables. Yeah, this is a, this is a process. You need to Start off with uh, 100 gallons and you reduce it down to about 10. And then you got a nice sauce. We are going to mount this sauce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little whole butter and I'm just gonna break it up and put it in the sauce. Stir it around a little bit and you get that nice butter finish creaminess to the sauce. And just like that, it happened. This sauce has been mounted. In another pan, he sauteed fresh vegetables. His secret here is to use whatever's in season and grown here at home. We got carrots, zucchini, yellow squash, peppers. Those are local. My southern twist on this is most people serve marsala over some kind of a pasta or maybe like a whipped potato or a roasted red potato. Here in the old Kentucky dinner train of Lexington, we like to use grits because grits rock. We're going to put that right on there. And here we got some nice southern veggies. And then that rich mushroom spike marsala sauce. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our chicken marsala.
great secrets to making marsala. And Chef Gill has some secrets for cooking the other white meat. We got our pork loin. We're roasting these fresh off every day. And it's going to be extra special, juicy, and delicious just because it's from Kentucky. It's just better food here. It always has been. That's why I came here. All right, we got fresh whipped Yukon Gold potatoes. And then I'm going to take these pretty pork loin pieces I made and just kind of fan them out over the potatoes. Then we're going to take our fresh vegetables. Put those right back there behind. Then we're going to take this little bit of heaven right here. That bit of heaven is what Gil calls his apple, onion, bourbon, berry compote, which takes days to make. Basically, we start with a pot full of onions, cook those way down, caramelize, and then we deglaze all that with bourbon, add apples, cranberries, white grapes, fresh thyme, oranges, cook all that down together with fresh uh, apple cider, let that cook for about a day and a half, and you end up with this heavenly concoction right here that literally tastes like fall in a spoon. It's really, really good. And this we're just gonna feature on top of our pork loin. And that is your pork loin, bourbon, apple, onion, cranberry, white grape compote. Heaven, heaven, heaven. Much more coming up as we ride the rails on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Next up, it's pasta, prime rib, and of course, dessert. The secrets to the Lexington Dinner Train's chocolate choo-choo for two. And homemade cherry cobbler. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs continues. Hi everybody, I'm Tyler Florence, and thanks for watching Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Tim Laird back with you with more secrets of bluegrass chefs, dining out and riding the rails on R.J. Corman's Lexington Dinner Train. These dining cars are original from the 1940s, but have been brought back to tip-top condition. It's a lovely train. Couldn't ask for anything better. We're literally transforming you back to 1940s like you would have ridden high-end rail service dining back then. It's a trip back in time and a trip through some of Kentucky's most picturesque places from Keeneland to Calumet. It's perfect for just about every occasion. Anniversaries, birthdays, Wednesdays. weddings. Anniversary gift from my daughter and son-in-law. We loved it. What's not to love with views like this and food like this? And this is our pasta dish. What we have is we have potato and yoki and we have cheese filled tortellini. And then over here we got a nice pesto cream. So we're just gonna real quick saute on our pasta with our pesto cream. In a food processor, I take basil, pine nuts, Parmesan cheese, olive oil, puree it all together and I make the pesto. And then I just take heavy cream, pour it in a pot, get it warm, stir in the pesto, I have pesto cream. After the cream sets, I put a couple egg yolks in. So as it heats up, it'll thicken a little bit. That's a secret. See it kind of thickening up on the edges now? That's that egg yolk coddling in there. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of Parmesan cheese. I want a little bit to melt in here too also, right when I'm getting ready to plate it up. It's starting to kind of get thicker and it's kind of making its own kind of sauce now. It's adhering to the gnocchi, it's adhering to the tortellini. We're real close. So now what we're gonna do is plate it up. Then you can't have pasta without some good crusty bread. So I take some good crusty bread, I put that in there. A large amount of Parmesan cheese goes on top of that. And that is your dish, a vegetarian's delight. And that's yummy. And talk about yummy, Chef Gill does prime rib as well as anyone. The secret is this bad boy right here. Because this is the secret to really good prime rib right here. Low and slow. And still enough heat to get a crust like this. The secret to getting that crust is a dry rub that they've been using on R.J. Corman's dinner trains since day one. It's Lowry season salt, horseradish, pepper. That's it. That's the whole rub. But the secret is this. Oh, oh, oh. That, my friend, is the secret. Medium rare all the way through, not 
well done out here and just a little bit of medium rare. And this is about the portion you get here on the dinner train. Now I need a knife and a fork. Look how delicious that looks. Oh my God. The portions are hearty, that's for sure. But make sure you save room for dessert. The chocolate choo-choo, everybody needs to get that for dessert. It's great. The chocolate choo-choo for two comes in two ways. Most of the time, it's bourbon chocolate mousse and whipped cream inside a chocolate train. During the winter, you can get the Christmas choo-choo. We're using a strawberry mousse and a chocolate mousse today. Jeff Reed is Chef Gill's right-hand man in the kitchen. He makes a lot of chocolate mousse and a cherry cobbler like Grandma used to make from scratch. The secrets are the fresher the better. We're going to start with some fresh dark cherries here, this is the sweet cherries. Going to grate some cinnamon in there. Going to take some fresh nutmeg and grate right in there. Then we're going to take some powdered sugar, dump right in there, a couple of cups at least. Mix that all in, just get that all mixed in. We're going to go on the stove. I'm just going to add this right in. Bring it up to the high heat where it uh, comes to a boil and then we're going to reduce it uh, a little bit. And then when, once it comes to a boil, we're going to make a slurry, which is just cornstarch and water. And that tightens everything and brings all that love together. In this case, he makes the slurry using cherry juice. I don't want to um, dilute the flavor at all by adding more water to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the cherry juice as the liquid. You can actually use any kind of a liquid as a, as a, uh, to bind the cornstarch. While the cherries come to a boil, Chef Jeff prepares the crust, which will cover the top of the cobbler. This is just a standard pie dough. It's made from scratch on the train, but you could cheat by buying a pre-made dough at the grocery store. So we're just going to take a little uh, flour and sit on the table here. Give that a quick roll. These have tightened up nicely. We're going to take that. We're going to spray our pan and transfer them right into the pan. Take our crust, lay it right over the top. We don't have to be perfect at all. We're going to scoop this out and serve it. We're going to pop this right into a 375 degree oven, about 30 minutes, and we should be good to go. And then we're going to top that right with some fresh made ice cream, and that's it. That's our cherry cobbler. And that's our show. Thanks to Chef Jeff Reed and Gil Logan for sharing their secrets. And thank you for riding along. I will love to do it again. That'll do it for this edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird, and we'll see you next time. Secrets. Secrets. I'll give you one more secret. Secrets. When the time is right for a cool, refreshing soda, choose Kentucky Soft Drink, Ale 81. As Kentucky proud as they come, the recipe passed down four generations is ginger and citrus in harmony. Great for a mixer, cooking, and enjoying. Ale 81. When the time is right, make it a late one. Ale 81.